building the remaining microservices. What we will learn in section three, we will learn about handling callbacks with promises and event emitters. We'll set up the remaining microservices and we'll create an API gateway that will serve as a way to consolidate the microservices for a single app. Handling callbacks with event emitters and promises. In this video, we'll learn about ways to deal with Node.js callbacks, which are sometimes confusing and hard to debug. We'll learn about using event emitters, which are a native Node.js event emitter library, or the promises library, which provides an object that represents the result of an asynchronous transaction. Callbacks. In order to ensure that calls in Node.js are non-blocking, they need to be made asynchronous. Traditionally, that has been done with callbacks. As you can see here, there's a function called readJSON that when called, uses the file system to read a file. When the file system read file method is completed, a function is triggered. And that function contains a callback that is passed to the readJSON call. And as you can tell here, this is a very simple example. However, if you have a workflow type situation in which you need to execute a series of functions that do something like this asynchronously, you have to deal with the callbacks, which can become quite deep and hard to understand sometimes, difficult to follow and trace, and also difficult to debug. So we're going to look at a couple alternative ways to deal with this. Event emitters. Event emitters are provided as a part of Node.js's core, and it is a way that emits events that can execute a function called a listener. This can help you with callback management. However, error handling can be a little bit tricky here. So first you see we have a collection Call. So this is a call to MongoDB to find something from a collection. It looks like it has an empty query and it's going to convert it to an array. So when it is completed, it triggers this function. This function is basically where the callback occurs. So when the find method is completed, this event emitter emits an event called alerts obtained. Now you can see down here, we have an event emitter with the on handler that basically listens for the event to trigger. And when on finds that the alerts obtained event has been emitted, it triggers this function. Here, we're going to do something. Promises. In Node.js, promises provide handling of asynchronous callbacks. And when it does so, it has four states, one of which is fulfilled or rejected, pending or settled. When a method is called that's asynchronous that finally returns later, the then method gets fired. If there happens to be an error in the asynchronous call, the catch method allows you to catch those errors and reject them or handle them appropriately. And then when there is a final settling of the promise, the done method gets fired as well. As you can see here, we're returning a new promise that contains a function that's actually a callback that contains two arguments, one fulfill, the other one reject. We're calling the connect method on the Mongo client here to connect to a MongoDB. When the connection is completed, the then method gets triggered in which we do a query, and if we happen to get some documents, we trigger the fulfill method. And if we don't get any documents, or if there's an error, we trigger the reject method. And here we do a catch, and we can catch any error that passes through. Now, as you can imagine, then all we have to do is pass a method to those function calls.